Hello everyone, if you're new, welcome. Today I'm going to be telling you about my experience with my first year, giving you guys some tips, what to expect. This video may be long, so I'm going to leave the timestamps for certain parts and topics in the video if you don't have time to watch the entire thing. Go check in the description. I have just done my first year at uni as an acting student in Bournemouth and I absolutely loved it. I'm not going to lie, it was a blast. Probably one of the best years of my life. I did really well. I got really good grades. I studied hard. Well, I probably could have studied even harder, but I did study. I had a great time. I made loads of friends. If you're thinking of going to uni, I just want to say that I think what you choose to do should really be something you love and something you definitely want to pursue because university is expensive and I know this is the boring part it is nine grand a year at least it is for me and then you have living costs on top of that it is very pricey and of course just like everybody else I got a loan for the nine grand for the year and I got a loan for my maintenance loan which is living costs which to be honest barely covers it so you will need to have some savings or some help from parents just for living food bills rent that sort of stuff and travel is a big expenditure so there are I'm going to be talking about my experience as an acting student. I'm sure this video will still be relevant to other courses as well. So to get into the acting course, I had to audition. I sent in an audition tape and I have lots of videos about my auditioning experiences. They will all be in the description if you'd like to check them out. I also did uni vlogs with my first couple of weeks of uni and settling into my accommodation. I vlogged everything, the whole experience, so go give them a watch. It will probably be quite helpful for you. So the preparation, before you go to uni, you need to make sure you have accommodation and this can be stressful. I did not get into halls because they get taken very, very quickly. Um, but don't panic if you don't get into halls. There's always other accommodation. It's not unusual for people to just live in normal flats or shared houses in their first year. What was strange was that you had to book your room in halls before you even knew if you got in or not. After I got in, I tried to get a place in halls and I was like 152 on the waiting list. Even if you don't know if you're gonna get in, you need to already apply for a place in halls, which is bizarre. I was a late comer, but I managed to get a place with a random girl that I met at an accommodation day that they held at the uni. It turned out to be the worst decision I ever made. The girl was an absolute nightmare. Many of you will have known from my Snapchat stories. There will be a video coming about all of the crazy shit that happened, um, but I'm still waiting on some info. So sorry, going off topic, but yes, that video is coming. I know many of you wanted to know what happened. There's another video to come about that. Anyway, preparation before you go to uni, they will send you like starter packs and stuff. They sent me a list of things I needed to get, so book um, to read and for my acting course we were only allowed to wear black um, and they told us to get nude underwear, character shoes, like nude underwear so that when you put costumes on you don't see your underwear through them. Certain things we had to buy ourselves. So in the first week of uni they have what's called a freshers week in most universities and this is where you your lessons don't start yet but you just have um, a week of sort of like introduction seminars and stuff like that telling you what's what where's where, everything you need to know, and then they'll have lots of uh, fun stuff to do, lots of free goodies and sweets, lots of freshers parties. So the first week was a blast. I had so much fun. I made lots of friends in the first week. It was fun, but you have to make sure that you don't get too carried away because in that first week of freshers, everything's crazy. You wake up with hangovers, and then the next week, shit starts to get serious, and you actually have to get your head down and focus. If you're the sort of person that struggles with temptation, make sure you're able to balance your social life and your focused study life because after all, you are going to uni to study to get a degree in something. I have to keep reminding myself that, as fun as it is. On the first actual day, it was quite scary, the first day of lessons, because I felt like it was, they were sort of gauging, judging who whose talent was good, because they had us do a lot of improvisation exercises, and just games, and just, I guess they were sort of trying to see how we worked together, 
see a little bit of how our acting was like. So yeah, we did a lot of improvisation. It was the funnest day ever. We played hilarious games. I laughed so much. In that first week of, first couple weeks of uni, I don't think I've smiled ever so much in my life. I laughed, smiled so much. I was just exhausted after every day, but it felt good. In university, they will give you a lot of paperwork and lots of dates. Now this is the most important tip I'm going to give to you is write down everything. Write down the dates for everything you've been given, any assessments, any work, anything in the future. Get yourself an academic diary or just a normal diary. This is the biggest piece of advice I can give to you. I talked about it in my uh, college experience video. Get a diary with the days, the months, the years, whatever. Something you can carry around on a daily basis and write down absolutely everything. Paperwork can get quite abundant, so it's a good idea to get yourself some of these plastic things. Mine are falling apart because I've had so much in them. And I just uh, categorise them. It sounds like I'm really like organised. and You don't have to be an organised person, but as long as you try to keep things simple, the, the whole reason behind this is keeping things simple so it doesn't get over overwhelming because you will easily get overwhelmed with the amount of information and paperwork you get so as long as you just store it discard anything you know you definitely don't need because there's no use just having bits of random paper that you're just holding on to the more you can get rid of the better just keep hold of what is important the information that you need I've got a whole folder of just random like the sort of student handbook and just stuff that I might need to know about like how to use the library in this folder which I don't reach for so much but it's just good to have it um, and know where all that stuff is and then I would have one for my daily things so my reflection journal things I would need on a daily basis pens pad of paper always have paper on you I would highly recommend getting something like this a poker pad you can take it to every single lesson um, write down what you need to write uh, to do all your studies because acting is a practical course we weren't really sitting there writing a lot we're mostly doing and acting and doing exercises but what we did have to do we had to reflect on each lesson especially in the first month or so so we had a reflection journal and we had to talk about what we did in the lesson and what we learned la di la yada yada sometimes got a bit boring but we were asked to read these out uh, in random lessons so it was like we sort of had to do it they made us write a weekly reflection on each week um, which was good practice for uh, the evaluations that we would have to write at the end of each unit which would be graded so it's just good practice for writing especially for those of us who don't write a lot like myself the year is split up into three terms I believe so in each term we would study a different unit of acting there was three also three different aspects to our course so there was the acting then we had skills classes so this was voice classes, singing classes, and movement classes. We also had practice in context, which was basically the whole theory side, the whole writing side, the boring side. So we would have to attend lectures, take notes, and um, for our assessments, have to write uh, about a certain topic. Sorry, the sun's changing right by the window. The writing aspect is, especially for me and a lot of people, very daunting because I was never very good at writing in school and at college. I took an English A-level. I still only just scraped by with a pass, just. For some reason, and I never really got the help I needed either. I was just always seemed to be doing it wrong, seemed to be writing wrong, but I tell you what, for some miracle of a reason, since I've come to uni, my writing has gone from here to here, and that's just from self-learning. My tutor, gave us a guide for academic writing because you will need to write academically, use proper academic protocols. Hopefully if you have a good uni with a good organisation, they should give you resources to learn how to write properly and how to reference, how to write a bibliography, a reference list, put in quotations, long quotes, short quotes, how to use italics and how to use ibid, opsit, sic. It sounds confusing but I'm sure if you don't know already they will tell you all about how to use the proper format of writing. It took a little while to get my head around but I just made sure to uh, research a lot into it myself and that really helped with my writing and with my grades on my uh, written 
papers. Just make sure you know what you're doing and if not, always ask. At the beginning of each unit, we were given like a whole little booklet. I don't know if you can see because of the exposure, what we were going to be doing basically in that unit of study, which was really helpful. I like to know what I'm doing at all times. I will say that I wasn't so pleased with some of the organisation because the way that they gave us information I found really confusing and there was a lot of confusion in our first year. They said that it was one of the worst years, our, our class, our like course, said that they were one of the worst years for like attendance and people being unorganised, people turning up at the wrong times or being given the wrong information and they sort of blamed it on us a lot but I think they sort of needed to turn around and look at themselves and look at their organisation system because they were sort of misleading us, there was a lot of confusion. On an acting course you cannot be late, you cannot be late and this is probably for other cl uh, courses as well but especially with acting, lateness is taken really seriously because in the show business world if you're going into that area, that career, sometimes if you're late on set you can be fired. You really can be fired just for being late. So in uni, they sort of train you to be in the mindset of never ever to be late and it is taken seriously. So always turn up your lessons on time. Make sure in the first week that you know your transportation, how you're getting to uh, uni. I lived sort of in a flat, sort of 10 minutes from town and then the uni was like a 15 minute bus journey from town. So I had to uh, figure out the buses, figure out what buses I'm getting, make sure you know exactly how you're getting there every day. Look at the train times, the bus times, or, or the route you're going to walk, or if you're uh, driving in a car, make sure you know where you're going. It will just make your life so, so much easier just to know your way around, know your transportation. Yes, sometimes your buses or your trains might be late and then you'll be late and then you have to make excuses. But I just always made sure to get a bus that got me in around 20 minutes early, just in case, just in case there's a buses are down, trains are down, always have a backup plan of how you're gonna get there. So in terms of studying at university, yes, you need to study a lot. It's not like school or college. It's, I don't want to say it's like really serious, but it kind of is. Like sometimes I, I don't actually believe that I'm a university student and I'm actually doing well. I never thought that I would be doing something like that. Sometimes I still don't believe it. But anyway, especially for written work, make sure you are reading books. Always be reading something. I don't know it, what it's like for other courses, but especially with acting, be learning all the time because I'm gonna say a vast amount of what I learnt during the year was self-taught, was reading, researching myself because they don't spoon feed you at university. They don't, you know, you have a lot of it, like I'd say probably 50% of it is up to you. This book, was one of the most helpful books uh, for me and for a lot of the people on my course this year. The Complete Stanislavski Toolkit by Bella Merlin. It literally teaches you pretty much how to act in a whole book. It's really helpful the way it's laid out, really interesting. If you're doing something you love, that you're actually interested in, studying should be somewhat interesting for you if you're doing something that you want to be doing. I also was told to get this book, Impro by Keith Johnston. I didn't really read much of it. Uta Hagen, Respect for Acting. I love Uta Hagen. Uh, I watched some of her classes from the 90s online on YouTube. I'll link some down below. They're really interesting. She's a really interesting um, teacher and I read her book. It's also very good. Reading now, for those of you who don't read a lot, I don't read a lot so I feel you, but trust me, when it comes to writing your evaluation and you need to put quotes in because you need to have like a minimum of like I a minimum amount of quotes in. Like if you're writing a piece of writing, a written assessment, you need to have quotes legitimate quotes from actual book, from actual online resources that are legit from newspapers, the Guardian website. If your uni is helpful, they should give you, like they gave me loads of brochures on like good websites to go on. They should give you lots of helpful resources. How the assessments worked, um, for acting at least, is we would prepare something, work on a performance, and then at the end of that unit, we would perform that performance to 
the lecturers. Uh, it would also be filmed so that they could look back at it and that would be graded. So that performance would be graded. And then with that, about a week after that, we would be due to hand in our evaluation. So it, our evaluation is just like any old evaluation. 1,500 words just on your experience with the unit, how you think the performance went, what you learnt, all that. <laughs> yada yada stuff and you would also be graded on that though for our course in particular 70 percent of the grade is your practical so your performance and not just your performance but also your process so how you work in lessons how you rehearse the tutors the teachers they're always watching you i wouldn't say judging you but they're always observing you don't just look at um the final product as what you're going to be graded on because they grade you on how you you work with others and also how professional you are are you turning up are you bothered are you putting in the work are you putting yourself forward in lessons it does all add up and then 30% of your grade is the written element so it's not as much something that's frustrating for me is you know you could be the best actor in the world but if your writing isn't so great that will affect your grade and it's it really sucks because everybody has the ability to be great. But then just because, you know, you your quote was wrong or you referenced it wrong or it was all, you know, all the technical side of your essay was a bit skew with, that can really affect your marks. And that's why it's so important to look into how to write a proper essay. Take it from me, I've, I've never written a good essay in my life before I came to this university. My first evaluation was the best piece of writing I had ever written and that was purely because I looked into how to do it. <laughs> There's like a formula to writing a good piece of writing and I mean I'm not going to talk about it too much because believe me I don't even know how I managed to get such a high grade on that. I really don't know. I got one of the highest grades in my year for especially for the first unit. Um, people's grades did go up throughout the second and third unit but I've still been up there. Like I've maintained my high grade through each term and it's a lot of pressure. I've never been the person in the class who gets the good grades. I've always been down there at the bottom. So to suddenly be really good is quite a shock to my system and it's also a lot of pressure because you kind of know that everybody kind of knows that you're doing well and so you feel this pressure to to keep it up and especially for your family as well you know they'll be so proud of you and my, my mom has been so proud of me so not only pressure but also motivation to keep working hard and you know this first year went so well mind you I haven't actually got my grades back for the the whole year but like the individual grades I've been getting for the terms have been up there in the top range of my course of my class like I've never done well at anything in my life so it's definitely been a change for me but as long as if they give you a brief read it highlight any of the words they use for example they give you these aims and learning outcomes develop your foundation in psychophysical awareness, psychophysical acting, extend your understanding, integration, all these good words, use these words, read the stuff that they give you, they use really good words, highlight the words and then use them, steal these words and use them in your uh, writing. Especially if they're telling, if they're, they're basically telling you what they want in the brief, so I just highlight bits of that and I steal it and I put it in my evaluation so that they know that I'm taking on board what they're trying to get out of me and I'm giving it back to them. But that's just a little tip. This is not a video all about writing an essay. <laughs> Believe me, I'm not the one to be giving you that information because I don't even know what I did right, to be honest. Another big thing going into uni, you have to be able to sort your finances and this is another one of the boring parts. I actually find it quite fun to budget and sort out my finances. I don't know why it's strangely satisfying. Depending on if you're in halls and then internet and bills and water bills and electricity bills are all inclusive, or if you are in, a, were in a flat like I was um, and I had to pay gas, electricity on the meter, I had to sort out internet, buying food, you know, we didn't share food, we bought our own food. If you're sharing a, a house with lots of people, you might collectively buy food for the house and take turns cooking. But for me, I bought my all my own food, did all my own cooking. Try not to buy food at uni, try not to go to the cafeteria too much, always bring food from home. You will save yourself a pretty penny, believe me. You can spend, you can end up spending like a fiver a day just on snacks and tea, like coffees. And I've never once bought a coffee from uni because I think it's just such a waste of money. And I just bring a bottle 
bottle of water with me everywhere I go. I always have a snack in my bag. It saves me a lot of money. I spent £200 for a bus pass, which would last me the whole year, which meant that I could pretty much go anywhere in Bournemouth I wanted at any time with this one bus pass. And I know £200 is a lot, but in the long run, it saved me money. Instead of, instead of spending money every day on a ticket, I just had it all on one card. It meant that I could travel pretty much anywhere in Bournemouth for free with this card. Well, not for free, because I paid for it. But um, yeah, so look into things like that. Get an NUS card. Uh, it's like a student discount card, which allows you to get discounts in certain places. I was meant to get one and I forgot. <laughs> Use your student discounts. It will help you out a lot. Try to be efficient, aware of your energy usage, your water usage, especially if you're paying your own bills. Don't leave the lights on, you know, stuff, well, stuff your mum would tell you, but just try to be aware of what you're using, your spending. Make sure you have enough money for your priorities, so your food. Don't <laughs> don't go out too much. I know I'm saying this, but in my first year, I didn't really go out a lot because everybody was in halls and I wasn't. So it's kind of, it was hard in a way because I felt sort of outside of, you know, the social aspect. And yeah, I did go out sometimes. I would go have fun or we'd go to a club, but I didn't do it as often as many of the people on my course did. And I think it actually helped me to stay focused, but obviously you do wanna have fun as well. You still wanna have a social life because it is healthy to a certain extent. Because I sort of lived quite far from everybody else, I was sort of isolated. In my next year, so in September, I'm gonna be living in a house with five people and I know that it's gonna be really difficult for me because I'm a very clean and tidy person. I like things to be decorated in a certain way and I know I'm gonna have to relax those traits of mine because I know it's not going to be clean and tidy how I want it but I'm just willing to relax for a year and it's going to be difficult but I'm I'm excited and I'm pretty sure I'll probably be a lot more social as well